Hello everybody, CRS here. This video will help you understand how to solve problems on equation of trajectory of a projectile. It's a very important topic for various competitive exams, especially for JE. The kind of problems that we are doing could appear in exams like JE or other national level exams. It will also help you for NEET and the other state level exams, for example, KCET. Let's begin with the first question. A jet of water is projected at an angle of 45 degree. The question says that the angle of projection is 45 degree. I'll jot it down as theta equal to 45. With the horizontal from a point A, which we will assume to be the origin. Right? A will be the origin, which is situated at a distance OA equal to half a meter. So the question says OA initially is half a meter. So X1 because it's the a part of the question i'll say that the distance to the point which we have to find um, where the water jet strikes is half a meter to begin with two meter or the, in the second case x2 is two meter from a vertical wall the speed of projection has been given i'll write that speed of projection which he supplies as v naught as u which is equal to root 10 meter per second dear friends find the point p of striking of the water jet with the vertical wall so there is a water jet that is being projected at a speed of root 10 meter per second it goes and hits the wall at some point when the wall is half a meter where does the water jet strike question number one if it is two meter where does it strike that's the second question in one of my previous videos, I talked to you about how to derive the equation of trajectory of a projectile. We will use that here. Watch. The equation of trajectory of a projectile says that y is equal to x tan theta minus gx squared divided by 2 u squared cos squared theta. That is the equation of trajectory of a projectile. For a part of the question, we will use this same equation to solve. Let's find the y coordinate. Y coordinate is the coordinate at which the water jet strikes when x is equal to half. Let us substitute y equal to x is half than 45 degree minus g approximately it's 10 x square would be 0.25 because uh, that's the um, half half square is 0 0.25 divided by 2 u square to u square dear friends u is root of 10 u square would become 10 right cos square theta cos theta is 45 uh, cos 45 is 1 by root 2 and if you square it it will become 1 by 2 right so 2 and 2 will get cancelled 10 and 10 will also get cancelled tan 45 dear friends is 1 so y becomes equal to 1 into 1 by 2 it's 0 0.5 minus 0 0.25 the answer you get is 0 0.25 which can be written as 1 by 4 meter this is the y coordinate in the first situation so if you want to find p x comma y x anyways has been given in the question so p x comma y would be p of um, half comma 1 by 4 half meter and 1 by 4 meter that's the solution to the a part of the problem now at this stage you can pause the video and then see what is the answer you get for the second part of the question all that you have to do is substitute for x um, equal to 2 this time and let's see what is the answer let's go and explore pause this video here and then find if you can get to the answer quickly i'm sure you will be able to but do do it yourself by the way, let me continue with the rest of the solution. I will be substituting once again y equal to instead of x, let us substitute 2. Tan 45 is anyway 1 once again minus g is 10. x square this time is 4 divided by 2. u square root 10 square is 10 multiplied by cos 45 is 1 by root 2. Square it and it will become 1 by 2. The same thing will happen, but this time you will see that 2 minus 4 would be minus 2 meter. So, the point this time is different. When the wall is a little farther away, the jet will strike 
like that it is below the x axis and it will strike at a point 2 comma 2 meter comma minus 2 meter 2 meter comma minus 2 meter so this is how much the uh, question can be solved to an extent where you know everything about where the water jet strikes because water jet a uh, water jet is made of tiny tiny particles and all of these are traveling a parabolic trajectory it's the same equation that holds for even this situation so next time when you find a question like this you will know where to apply this equation and i would want you to practice a lot of these questions let us look at another genre of question um a particle is projected from the ground at t equal to 0 so that on its way it just clears two vertical walls of equal height on the ground let us visualize this scenario let me draw the coordinate axis this is the x axis right and let me also draw the y axis so here is the y axis okay that's the y axis all right all right here we go this happens to be the y axis having said that now we will also imagine two walls this is wall number 1 right and there is another similar wall both of them are of the same height so i have imagined two walls when a projectile is projected the question says that the projectile just clears the two walls so it has cleared the two walls and it has fallen back to the ground so let me mark this as y axis dear friends and this as x axis the question to me is what is the height of the wall let's assume that the height of the wall is h so this is the height of the wall and that's h the question also says t1 is the amount of time at which t1 is the time at which the projectile clears the first wall and t2 is the time at which the projectile clears the second wall having said that now we will be figuring out the height of the wall let's do that you can write the equation of kinematics for y axis alone and let's write s is equal to ut plus half at square for y axis let's do that watch we have y equal to uy into t plus half a y into t square that's the equation you have well now if you want to substitute for this equation in my case y is h because that's what i want to find i want to find the height of the wall so instead of y let me write h u y because it has been projected with an initial velocity u and let's assume that it makes an angle theta with the horizontal because the question says that it makes an angle theta with the horizontal and u is the initial velocity we can just say that u y is the y component of initial velocity and y component of initial velocity is u sin theta u sin theta and this happens at time t1 the first wall is cleared at a time t1 and the acceleration due to gravity is negative because it's a vector that points in the downward direction and i'll continue to write half g t1 square this is the equation for the particle when it is clearing the first wall right similar equation can be written for the same particle when it is clearing the second wall try to write it yourself you have h equal to u sin theta initial velocity is just the same but this time the time is t2 minus half g t2 square is all you have now to go further maybe you should call this equation 1 and call that equation 2 let us equate both of these equations if you do that you will have u sin theta into t1 minus half g t1 square equal to u sin theta t2 minus half g t2 square right let's continue to simplify this dear friends when you simplify this you will have t2 square minus t1 square pulled to the left hand side you will have the common factor 
which looks like this half into t2 square minus t1 square into g so this term and this term i transferred this here after that what do we have we have um i'm sorry okay then what do we have maybe i'll just write it a little down we have half g into t2 square minus t1 square equal to on that side u sin theta will be a common factor and then you will have t2 minus t1 right that's what you have now what would be u sin theta dear friends u sin theta can now be written as because this is like a minus b a square minus b square it's a plus b into a minus b a minus b and a minus b will get cancelled u sin theta would simply be t1 square t1 sorry t1 plus t2 divided by 2g 2 into g is all you will have that is u sin theta having said that we will substitute this u sin theta back into equation 1 to get the answer for the height let's do that we have h equal to let's put it there we have uh, t1 plus t2 divided by 2 multiplied by g into t1 minus half g t1 square is all you will have let us uh, multiply this you will have half g t1 square plus half g t1 t2 minus half g t1 square plus minus half g1 square and half g1 uh, g t1 square will get cancelled what do you have for height now we have answered the first part of the question and the first part of the question turns out to be h equal to g times t1 t2 divided by 2 that's the height of the wall so this can become a shortcut in the exam in the question if the uh, if the question says that a particle clears two equal walls at times t1 and t2 what is the height of the wall then you can just use this so it can be used as a shortcut let us solve the second part of the question let's find out what's the second part of the question the second part of the question is the time t1 t2 in terms of the height of the wall that's the question you need to find t1 and t2 in terms of the height of the wall anyway we have already found the height of the wall in terms of t1 t2 um we will now figure out what are these two times in terms of height of the wall let's do that right <clears throat> let's have the same equation written once again the equation you have is y equal to u sin theta in, into t plus or rather minus because g dear friends is negative half g t square this is the equation you have that's the equation for uh, y axis motion of the projectile this is a quadratic equation in time which means the particle attains the same y coordinate at two different time intervals and that's what the question says is t1 and t2 let's find that it's a quadratic equation all that you have to do is find the solution for this one let's find the solution here maybe you should transfer it here i'll have half g t square minus u sin theta into t plus y equal to 0 because the question says we need to find the times at which the projectile leaves i mean projectile goes over then instead of writing it y it's best you if you can write it as h right because h is the height of the wall there equal to 0 so you have a nice quadratic equation here maybe i'll change this also to h because it's the height of the wall that we are talking about well this becomes t square minus 2u sin theta divided by g is what you will have here multiplied by t plus 2h divided by g now this looks like a nice quadratic equation if you solve it you can just say that time would be equal to apply the equation um, the, the roots equation for quadratic equation so we have 2u sin theta divided by g plus or minus root of 2u sin theta divided by g the whole square minus 4 into a b right a is 1 and b is 2h divided by g 
the whole thing divided by 2a. 2a, a is just 1. This is minus b plus r minus root of b square minus 4ac and divided by 2a, a is 1. This is the equation you have. So t1, if you just pull this out as a common factor, 2u sin theta by g here also is there. Here also it's there. If you pull it out, here you will have to multiply 2u sin theta divided by g the whole square. Then what will you have? You will have u sin theta divided by g plus or minus root of 1 minus root 2gh. Um, yep. So you will have root of 2gh divided by u sin theta the whole square. u sin theta the whole square. And this is the equation you will have. Dear friends, this is the equation you will have for t1 and t2. Do you see there are two rules? One is u, uh, u um, sin theta by g. Of course, there is going to be a 1 plus here. There is going to be 1 plus here. I am just writing u sin theta outside. u sin theta by g outside. And what you will have is 1 plus or minus because you have taken a, uh, we have taken u sin theta as common factor. This 2 and that 2 will get cancelled. So u sin theta by g into 1 plus or minus root of 1 minus root 2 uh, gh divided by u sin theta, the whole square, um, is the answer for t1 and t2. So this is not just t1, this is both t1 and t2. So t1 is a lesser time, then you will substitute this minus sign, you will take the minus sign. t2 is 1 plus because it's a little higher a value. Uh, it covers the first wall first and then the second wall later. That's how you solve for the second part of the question. Now, how do you solve the third part of the question? Let's find out. The third part of the question, dear friends, is write the expression for calculating the range of the projectile and separation between the two walls. So you need to find the range. Range would be dear friends. Let's try to figure out what is range. Look at this. Let's assume that this distance is x1 and that distance is x2. This distance is x2. Don't you think if you do x2 minus x1, you will get the distance between the two walls. And if you do x2 plus x1, then you will get the range because x2 is from here to here x2 is from here to here and x1 is just this part which is the distance from the projection uh, point of projection to the wall is the same thing on the other side as well. Uh, whatever is the distance x1 is the same distance here. So I can just write that x1 too. If you do x2 minus x1 you will get the distance between the two walls and if you do x2 plus x1 you will get the range of the projectile. Then how do you find x1 and x2 now is the question that we got to answer. Let's find how to do that. Dear friends, now you have, okay, now you have the equation of trajectory of the projectile, right? Y equal to x tan theta minus g x square divided by 2 u square cos square theta is all you will have. Now, you want to find the range. Let us solve for this equation putting y equal to h. You put y equal to h, you will have a quadratic equation in x, which means when x, when y is equal to x, you will get two values of x and they would be x1 and x2, um, 2u square cos square theta. Now, all that I want you to do as homework is solve this quadratic equation just like I have done it here for time. So, I have solved this quadratic equation for time, I want you to solve this equation exactly like the previous one which we got in which we got time at which the projectile clears the two walls. Try to use this and find the distances x1 and x2. The range would be the range would be equal to x1 plus x2 and the distance between the two walls would be x2 minus x1 as simple as that. So, yes, it's going to be a little bit of simplification, but it's all worth doing it. So, with this video, we have practiced how to solve problems on equation of trajectory of projectile. I would urge you to solve more problems like this and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much.